if someone says to you in Luke 17, the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God would be coming. And he then said it will not be coming through visible signs, not by looking at the moon, the signs of the moon, that sort of thing, inspecting the skies, nor will people say, in other words, they will say wrongly, don't believe them if they say, look, he's out there in the desert, he's over there or over here, because the kingdom of God will be all over. That's the sense of this passage. It's an error to say that Jesus will be localized. The whole text here is about the future kingdom, when it will be coming. The King James is a disaster here, where it says the kingdom of God will be in your heart, interior. That's wrong. The kingdom of God is, is barely ever interior. It's always the kingdom of God coming in the future, and you're to beware of the following. Looking for signs locally. That's a special word. Observing various heavenly bodies and trying to decide when he's going to come on that basis. And do not fall for the idea that he's in a secret place out in the wilderness. Don't go looking for them then. Why? Because when he comes, he'll be like lightning. Do you get it? Flashing from east to west, totally visible and all over. So both translations, I think, are wrong. King James is certainly wrong when it says within you. Among you is possible, meaning the king is standing there among them. But better still, as Richard Hyers does so well in his Jesus in the Future, better still, this is totally a second coming passage. When Christ comes, it will be like lightning flashing from east to west, totally visible, all over among you. There'll be no doubt about it, right? That, of course, takes us to the parallel and companion idea of a pre tribulation rapture. That's not true at all. There's only one second coming. I'm going to call it the parousia, the second arrival of Jesus or the arrival of Jesus. There is not a double second coming. I'll go boldly and say that Jesus will not come back today, this evening. He will not. Otherwise, the Olivet Discourse makes no sense at all. The sign of the second coming is the abomination of desolation preceding and the great tribulation which must precede it, Daniel 12, verse 1. Those things haven't happened yet. The man of sin in 2 Thessalonians 2 has not appeared. Paul tackled this very issue in 2 Thessalonians 2. They thought, those dear people with whom he had founded the church a very short time before, probably there only for a month, he gave them a complete eschatology, by the way, because it's part of the gospel. It's not something that you do when you can't think of anything else to do. He gave them all the details of the second coming. They were troubled by some false teaching, those dear people in Thessalonica, to the effect that the, the day of the Lord had arrived or had, was coming at least next Monday. Greek is perhaps slightly unclear there, but the point was they thought Jesus can come back tomorrow. Paul corrected that, and he would correct us today in the same way. He said, no, no, no. The man of sin must come proton first. First the man of sin who has his own fake parousia, and following that, the one single parousia of Jesus, and what's more, Jesus will destroy that awful man of sin at Jesus' second coming. That means it cannot be in 70 AD. You see why? Nobody living in AD 70 could possibly be killed at the second coming. So forget 70 AD. That's a very great mistake to think of 70 AD all the time. Yes, there was a destruction of Jerusalem then, that's true, but it was not the one that Jesus was talking about. That's a very favorite subject of mine because the simple truth is this. Jesus himself said that he and the disciples did not know the long reaches of time. I don't think any of them imagined the second coming to be 2,000 years ahead, at least, of where they were. That said, they knew the book of Daniel, and they knew that when the final king of the north Daniel 11.45, died, came to his end. Daniel 11.45, that final king of the north, the Antichrist. They knew that at that time, I'm in Daniel 12, verse 1 now, at that time there would be the great tribulation. And at that time, that's a fantastically interesting verse, Daniel 12, 1, the phrase at that time occurs twice in the same verse. What part of at that time do you not understand? 
at the time of the death of the last king of the north in 1145, Michael will arise. That's the patron angel of Israel. And there'll be a colossal time of trouble, unprecedented, unrepeatable time of the great tribulation. And at that time, your people will escape by being resurrected from the dead, Daniel 12, 2. I'll tell you, if you would take my word as follows, Daniel 12, 1 to 3 is a master Bible key. The great tribulation is future. The resurrection will happen at the end of that great tribulation after it, as will also the parousia. Don't forget the parousia is the same as the resurrection in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. It says clearly that the parousia of Jesus will be the moment of the first resurrection, that's to say the resurrection of all the faithful of all the ages. That's not so hard. What you have to do in the Bible is to join the synonymous terms. Once you pull them apart, everything shambles. So you start by saying the kingdom of God coming at the end of the age is the same as the second coming, is the same as the parousia, is the same as the resurrection, the first resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Now you're putting the story together. At the moment, most people have got bits and pieces of verses here and there. You've got to assemble it. 